Welcome to the show, guys. Happy Monday. Today we are talking about wide receiver beasts. And guess who we've got on the show? It's the beast himself. Tim, a.k.a. the bald man. What's happening, Tim? Hey, buongiorno. How are you? Hey, bonjour, bonjour. You're, you're saying bonjour, which is French in an Italian accent. You are way off, dude. No, hey, I think it's uh, buongiorno and bonjour are the very similar, oh, yes? Oh, I, thought, <laughs> I have no idea. I don't speak Italian, but... Uh, <laughs> Me either. But yeah, maybe you're right. So, guys, welcome. Happy Monday. Welcome to The Drive, guys. And what better way to start it than talking about wide receivers here on a Monday? Hope you guys are enjoying the community. If you're new to the channel, smash it, tap it, slap it. Hit the thumbs up here, guys, and grab the 16-round draft solution. Secure the solution. Secure the championship, guys. Get it below. It'll put you light years ahead of the Kinsheepsis. Lion mentality. Grab 60 rounds. Printable cheat sheet. Optimal players draft each, each round. Everything is laid out on a silver platter. Tim, even Tim can use it. He needs it because he follows the sheep herd, and he needs to get on the 16 rounds uh, train here. And I'm not too bright, so I need all the <laughs> help I can get. <laughs> all right so grab 16 rats and remember to hit it smash it tap it slap it the thumbs up guys really helps the channel all right let's dive into this wide receivers so what are we talking about here we're talking about the guys that are primed for a ton of volume and a ton of fantasy points in a great position to succeed with minimal wide receiver committee in a world where there's a ton of wide receivers in committees now like look if you look at the packers offense for example, you take a look at the Texans offense, for example, tons of tons of committees. These guys are going to be volume vultures, I would say. Volume getters, the beasts. Let's put it this way, though. We have to argue on a couple probably because you provided this list, and I don't necessarily agree with a couple of them. They're they're gonna outdo their opponent, not their opponent, their their counterpart, but yep. maybe not be a ball hog or a volume hoarder. I mean it's going to be close on a couple of these guys, I think. All right. Before we get into that, Tim, before we battle, we we have it, uh, you know, we fight it out. We just want to talk a little bit about. We now have breaking news. Oh, Tim likes that. Well, there isn't well, that. Many... Yeah, breaking news. You heard the breaking news guy. Once the breaking news guy comes on at the beginning of every show, that's when we get into breaking news. Why are you so confused? I'm not confused. I say, what happened? What, how, what happened in the news? Okay. What <laughs> I happened? You were... I thought you were shocked because you heard the guy's voice. We now book. have breaking news. <laughs> okay. I thought, what happened to this guy? Okay. It so, is yeah. scary, though. It's like the War of the Worlds, maybe. <laughs> it is a very serious announcer, that's for sure. Um, all right. There isn't really much. Darren Waller retired. Um, you know, he formed the team of his retirement. I guess, you know, he's been doing a lot of rap videos. Yeah, like, I think he had, like, a recent breakup video, and he was talking about his rap, you know, his girlfriend and... He's rapping about it or something, but that Darren Waller's done. Do we do we really care? Not not really. I mean, he had a couple good years in Vegas or not Vegas uh, with the Raiders. Let's just put yeah. it that way. But no, do we care? No, do we, we don't care. Not really. No. Go live don't. your life though, man. Have have a blast. Do what you're doing. Um, I'm hearing Tyler Conklin, tight end, expects a big step up in his play this upcoming season. I think he will eat this year. I think Tyler Conklin is a sleeper tight end. That's going to get Aaron. Aaron Rodgers is going to feed him. It's going to be Garrett Wilson. It's going to be Conklin is going to be a show. So that's that's what I'm, I'm hearing now in the news. The Conklin, he said he expects a big step up. What Do you, do you care? I the do. problem is you hear everything relies on Aaron Rodgers there, and he's coming back from a serious injury. I'm not sold. I mean, he's an old dude. He can't recuperate the way younger guys can. So uh, iffy, iffy, scary. In other news, there's something I really, really want to highlight here, Tim. And, you know, it really caught my attention. I did a post on it. Really annoyed me for that matter. It was Rashi Rice. You know what happened with Rashi Rice. If you don't know what happened with Rashi Rice, you'll be living under a rock or something. But the multiple vehicle collisions, speeding, causing bodily harm and injury to a lot of people, and, you know, hospitalizing people and then fleeing the scene, eight felony charges, okay? So finally, there's a comment out of Rashi Rice. Do you know what he said, Tim? He said, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Didn't, no, he no. didn't say sorry. That you would think that he would say I'm sorry. You would think that he would address the families that he harmed and and pretty much unalived. No, all he said it was about him. It was a narcissistic moment. He says all I could do is mature and continue to grow from that. Dude, you're okay. a grown man. I also want to say before people jump down your throat, I don't believe anybody died. So let's not say unaliving. That that's going to be bad. People are going to jump all over you for what that. Do you mean? I said he, I said nobody got unalived. And I thought you said 
practically unalived some people. Well, there was serious bodily <laughs> harm. So that there was, was there was. Yeah. Listen though, it, it becomes a whole legal thing. You can't say I'm sorry. You can't admit guilt. It's like it's a whole crap show, you know. So he's doing what he can. He's saying he's got to mature. Yeah, he's young. He made a dumb thing. Like I kind of get it, but yes, you can't just come out and say, I'm sorry, I, I accept all responsibility. There's all kinds of legal issues when you do that. That's a good point. He's, he's got to play the game, unfortunately. That is a good point, but he's still an idiot. And the fact of the matter is, if it was you and I, this, what really pissed me off is that you and I did it, right? We would 100% be in jail. That's it. Like That's just, a, that's just the way it is. We'd yeah, I don't have the funds to to get the kind of lawyers that he does. That's for damn sure. Yeah, so like, even if you like... We're not saying do this, but even if somebody, if, if you and I were to go to speed right now and we cause an accident, like, and we were like, let's say 40, I don't know what he was over. He was, he was significantly over the speed limit, but let's just say we're over the speed limit. We would significantly get, you know, our car, car impounded, license suspended, and definitely jail time. We'd be pulled away. That's only one thing. Never mind causing a multi, multi-lane collision, you know, getting these people to go to the hospital, seriously bodily, bodily harm. And then also like just taking off, just disappearing. Like they're saying, okay, we're just going to leave the scene. Like that alone, leaving the scene is like brutal. So eight felony, not one or two or three or four or five or six or eight. So why right. isn't he in jail? He should be in jail. It doesn't matter. Money talks, baby. Money always talks. Yeah. Rules for thee, not for me or whatever that saying is, right? Just BS, man. Anyway, let's get to the, let's get to the show here. Uh, let's start off with the first wide receiver. Guys, new to the channel, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. We're talking about volume guys, beasts, beasts at the wide receiver position. Uh, I'm on Ross St. Brown, man, prime for a huge, huge season. I do want to make a note here that I do think Jameer Gibbs is going to be stepping up in the passing game. And I also do believe that Jameson Williams, who is coming back now, has been, you know, improving and should play a full season, is also going to dip a little bit into the volume. That being said, 164 targets, you know, that's a little high. I think I think that's going to go down a little bit. 164 targets last year, 119 attempts, sorry, receptions, 1,515 yards, 10 touchdowns. I'm factoring in a regression this year for Amon or St. Brown. I'm saying it's pretty much the same offense. I think he's kind of hit his plateau. This is kind of where he's going to be. If you look back the last three years, he went 120. So as far as targets, 120, 145, 165. So yep. I put him in that 145 to 165. To me, that's kind of where he's going to stay for now. So yeah. it's going to come down to the touchdowns. And the f touchdowns went 5, 6, 10. So give him that 7 to 10 range, you know, like... It's good. He's going to be the volume getter on this team. Absolutely, man. There's no doubt about it. He's still solid. He's still safe. He still is, you know, and again, similar offense, which is good. Like where you have other wide receivers coming off very early, Tam, and they've got new quarterbacks or rookie quarterbacks thrown to him, uncertainty. Like even Adams, for example, which we left off this list because Aiden O'Connell, do we trust him? His touchdown to interception ratio for O'Connell last year was 12 to 7. Like, do I trust a guy whose touchdown to interception ratio is like, in parallel, non-par with each other. Like, no, you know, and, and, and Adams is like 31. But so again, going back to Amonra, it's like you're looking at almost like a similar type situation, you know, offensively. So other than those things I mentioned earlier. So Amonra St. Brown, prime for a big season. And I think one of the safest wide receivers to draft this year. Uh, next guy here, uh, Jamar, Jamar, however you want to pronounce it, Jamar Chase. Jamar How about Chase. you pronounce it properly? So as far as everything we've heard, it's Jamar. It's Jamar, Jamar. Okay, J Jamar. Yeah, it is Jamar Chase. Listen, great situation, a healthy burrow, ready to go. He's the alpha. He's the main guy. He's going to eat, man. And this is the year. I mean, like, we've always talked about him having these amazing years and the talent is there. But, like, he's not finishing on top. There's always some sort of excuse, some sort of hiccup, some sort of injury, some sort of excuse, like something. So, like, is this the year where he actually kind of really hits his ceiling? I mean, it has to be this year. If not, then I'm kind of giving up on this guy. I I think it's, I mean, it's tough. Higgins is there, man, and Higgins is no slouch. So I think right now targets are looking like 150 to Jamar and 100 to, to Higgins. That's the way it's going to be. Touchdowns are going to be very similar. It's just, it's not, he's he's a clear cut way over top of Higgins. You know, like he's, he's yeah. better. He's definitely going to get more volume, but it's still, Higgins is going to eat as well. Higgins is going to get his fair share. 
But if you look at a chart and for trending up, you know, he had 1,455 yards his rookie year. That was his biggest year, 13 touchdowns, 128 targets. That was his biggest year. But from a target perspective, they've had, his targets have actually been going up each year, 128 to 134 to 145 each year. But his touchdowns went down each year, 13, 9 to 7. And um, his fantasy points have not gone up from his rookie year, you know, 304 compared to 262. So I want him to get back to that pinnacle year, you know, where he had the 304 fantasy points. And if any year is going to happen to him, it's going to be this year. That's it. Yeah, like I say, though, Gusecki, or sir, I didn't say Gusecki, but Gusecki is there. I'm not, I know Gusecki's there as well. I'm not thrilled. Like, I don't think he's going to take much, but I believe Higgins is going to get his share. Yeah, I'm not really afraid of anybody else other than Higgins getting his share. And remember last year, everyone was telling you Higgins round two. I'm like, don't draft Higgins, and Higgins busted. You know, Jamar is the man. He's the alpha there. And yeah, obviously, these wide receiver twos definitely dip in. And when you compare his gap to like a gap with some of these other wide receivers in their second, like Amonra and, and Williams, bigger gap there. So I, I'm going to say Jamar is definitely going to eat this year. All right. Moving on to the next guy here who just got paid big money, huge money. I don't know what is it. I can't remember the exact contract. It's like 140 million. What was Jefferson? I don't even have Jefferson's card. I'll pull it up. But uh, Justin Jefferson's our next guy. The problem is, do we trust JJ McCarthy? Like, do we trust this rookie quarterback, Tim? Are you, are you grab? Are you drafting him? Are you drafting Jefferson this no. year? No, like you say. I mean, if it's not JJ McCarthy, it's Sam Darnold. So, really, is there any difference? Is it any better? I don't know, but I've been hearing they've been talking these guys up in camp. You know, they're like, oh, you know. Of course they do. I mean, everybody knocks their guys up. But even still, no, rookie quarterback or Sam Darnold doesn't impress me. You do have Jordan Addison there. You do have Hawkinson if he's healthy. Yeah. It's it's a tough one to spend a high price on J.J. this year, knowing with all these changes that are going on. Yeah, so looking at his mega contract, $140 million, Tim, $35 million per year. This is why they brought back Aaron Jones, the washed-up running back from the Packers. And it's like they got the rookie quarterback there. I don't know, man. It's it's weird here with, with fantasy because he's a first-round pick, and he got paid so much. So he's got, his belly's full. And it's like the Vikings are just like, okay, well, we got to blow our load on Jefferson, but we're, we're, we suck everywhere else. So it's like, okay. Do we, like, I don't know. And people say, well, yeah, you know, Hopkins and other receivers have done good. Even Jefferson did okay last year with mediocre quarterback play, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I still believe quarterbacks make wide receivers. And But we're talking beasts from a volume perspective, from a talent perspective. Yes, he's beasting, but I'm personally not drafting him because, because of the reasons I stated. I just think, you know, quarterback play is suspect. It's a no for me, man. It really is. I- I agree. And I think, you know, the reason why he got that monster is when you let go of your franchise quarterback, you let go of a great guy like Kirk Cousins, you got to make up for it. And you got to say, listen, man, we're going to give you tons of dough. Stick with us, please stay with us. Don't leave JJ. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's it. They had to. That's what it is. You got to pay your guy. Yeah. And I think he was really, I was hearing rumblings like he was ticked off. He's like, I got to make sure I got a good quarterback, blah, blah, blah. But then like the money just talks like, whatever, I'll just take the money. And I don't care who's throwing me the ball. I really don't, which is stupid because it's really going to hurt his numbers, I think. But from a volume beast perspective, he's still going to eat. All right. Next guy here, Tim, let's keep going here. Lion up, everybody. Hit the thumbs up, smash it, tap it, slap it, and make sure you guys grab 16 rounds. Let's move on to the next guy here. Because you can have all the optimal players drafted each round. All the beasts, literally, the bulletproof roster, as close as possible to it. Uh, Drake London is the next guy. Obviously, he's had some question marks over the years. Desmond Ritter throwing the ball. He was a first-round pick. I mean, this is the year for hit both him and Kyle Pitts. But from a, a volume perspective, I think he's absolutely primed. He's going to eat this year. Last year, Tim, I mean, like I said, 110 targets, only two touchdowns under a thousand yards. This is not the Drake London that, that everybody thought people would be like. He's, he's going into his third season. The first two seasons has even had a thousand yards, six touchdowns combined. So you could say that he sucks, but in his defense, I think he's still a good player, and he's just it's just bad quarterbacks, dude. And he finally, finally has an opportunity to shine this year. And I'm telling you, man, Kirk Cousins can feed him. And I think, but the thing is, you're paying an inflated price. I would have loved to if you, it was a more value this year. But the way I look at it is like, okay, well, Jefferson was coming off round one and he had Cousins. Now he's like, London's coming off round two and he's got Cousins. It's like, 
there's a little bit of a discount based on who's throwing the ball, and there's no other wide receiver that's going to take that volume. So I still think round two, man, I wish he was cheaper, but I, I love him this year. I think he's, this is the make or break for him, honestly. Yes. So that's the problem to me is the, the ADP is a little too high. And, and you're exactly right. Like I say, Drake is good, but is he elite? I don't know. We're going to find out this year. If he can't do it with Kirk Cousins, then he's not elite. He is just a good receiver. So one thing going for them too, though, is he's got a pretty good strength of schedule right now for uh, the yeah. wide receivers on the team. So everything is in his favor right now, man. Yep. This is it. This is the year. If he doesn't do it, then he's just one of those guys. Yeah, him and by Jan. Great. They got a good strength of schedule, good matchup. So I'm really excited for Atlanta as a whole. But yeah, this is the make or break year for Drake London. He has to do something or he's absolutely done. I will never bring up his name again. But his yeah. position situation is so good this year, man. He's just absolutely prime. I mean, like, they've got no one else there. Like, who's he competing with? Like, Darnell Moody sucks. Rondell Moore they brought in. Like, they've got nobody else there. It's like Drake, London, and nobody. Now you can make an argument that Pitts is there, but I still think London's the main guy. I think London's better than Pitts, but, I mean, it could go in. And, and Bajan's going to catch the ball quite a bit. But, dude, Kirk Cousins likes to throw, and someone, he's the only guy there. <laughs> That's how I look at it. I love it. Yeah, right now my thing is he's got a very safe floor. He should hit his floor no problem, and he does have a very high ceiling if everything works out right. All right, let's move on here. Another guy that's going to be a beast this year. Tim and I keep disagreeing <laughs> with this guy. We've had this People talk about this overselling him. Too much, too much. Smooth. The pressure. I wish there was a song. Like, what's that song? Smooth Criminal. Do, 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 do. I, want, I want a song that's or not talking Smooth about Operators, even better. Smooth, smooth Operator. operator. Yeah. That's it. So he's got smooth hands. He's a smooth route runner. I don't care. He's, we he's just smooth. don't know. Kyler no, no. is brutal. No, no. I, I know. But listen. And, and people were debating with you. I was like, no, Kyler is not that bad. And he made Hopkins who he was in 2020. Finishing he did fourth. not make Hopkins. Hopkins yeah, made Kyler. But he made him a fourth uh, overall finisher in PPR in 2020 amongst wide receivers. He made Hopkins. Kyler did. So he's going to do it again. He's done nothing for like three years. But this is the year. Harrison is a smooth operator. I was just trying to find a song that had smooth in it. There's got to be more songs with smooth. Again, smooth hands, soft, silky hands. Are we talking about a, a wide receiver here? Yeah. Or are we talking about something else? All right. <laughs> We're talking. Smooth right runner, dynamic talent, great prospect. This guy's got everything you want out of He's like your prototypical wide receiver. The, he's I like, don't, the, I don't argue those facts. I don't argue those facts at all. Like I do love the guy, but I am not a fan of Kyler. Kyler is not a great quarterback. And the crazy thing is, though, like he is expensive. He like second round is yeah, crazy when you can a get rookie, a rookie wide receiver with a crap quarterback. And people are thinking I'm crazy because I'm really high on Keon Coleman, who's coming off and he's got Josh Allen throwing to him. And Josh Allen was fifth in passing uh, passing attempts last year. So, you know, and I look at Brian Thomas, who's got Trevor Lawrence throwing to him. You get these guys around eight, nine. Their ADP is climbing, by the way. So it's like, yeah, I mean, you're getting like Brian, uh, Brian Thomas. You're getting like Keon Coleman, Lad McConkey, Lad McConkey. You're getting him later. And he's pretty much going to be the one theoretically to to Herbert. And then people are like, you know, not even blinking an eye. They're not even like, like, we're just going to dip Mar Marvin Harrison. No problem. But then they're like, oh, when I take Ladd McConkey as my, you know, potential wide receiver one, like, you're nuts. You're nuts. You know? Yeah. So like, and I, in my 2K league, I actually got Keon Coleman and Ladd McConkey as my starters slated out. And I do have a lot of depth, man. I got tons of depth at wide receiver. Those are just slated as starters. You are nuts, they're saying. Well, would I look nuts if Marvin Harrison was my wide receiver one? Because if you go running back round one, you get Harrison round two. He's your one. So, I don't know, man. A little expensive, but he's primed for a ton of volume, dude. A ton of volume. He is. It's just Kyler's never shown that he can do that. He's never shown it in, what, it. four or he five did. He didn't. That... I mean, DeAndre Hopkins, you cannot yeah. compare DeAndre Hopkins in his prime to a rookie coming in. I don't care who the rookie is. That's Marvin Harrison Jr. I do not care. Okay, we'll see. He's going to prove you wrong. He's going to make you give, you. you give Marvin Harrison Jr. a good quarterback. I am all with you. But right now with Kyler, I'm not in. Well, it time. Has we'll nothing tell. to do with Marvin. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know. But yeah, he is expensive. I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. And Kyler is hard to trust. All right, next guy here. Let's move on to the next guy. Uh, we are talking yeah, right. about 
Garrett the Carrot Wilson. Now, Tim, I love this guy. I think the situation is good. Now, I was listening to some, I don't know if he was a beat writer, some guys is going to watch these guys in camp. I don't know, he was an announcer. Because I have a news feed. I have multiple news feeds for, for NFL news. And he was saying that every time these guys, like well, uh, Rogers throws to Wilson, there's no drop pass. Like, it's like, it's harmony. It really is harmony. And if there's a sound to make it, you know, describe it, it kind of sound like this. No. <laughs> but anyway, it's 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 like harmony over there. They're not dropping balls. This is gonna be this is gonna be good, man. Again, Garrett Wilson, no committee there. He's he's the guy. They, who else is there? I mean, they don't have another wide receiver. They got Conklin, who we were talking about earlier. They there's nobody else that's gonna be relevant enough to take that volume too. I I like Garrett Wilson. So once again, though, it comes down to Aaron Rodgers, man. Like if Aaron does not make it to week one or he has a setback during the season, he's an older guy. How can he recuperate from that injury? We're going to have to see because I just don't know right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm Aaron, not sold on Garrett, honestly. Like the only person I would take on that team right now is Brees. Dude, Garrett yep. Wilson, Garrett Wilson had terrible quarterback play and he just finished <laughs> under a thousand yards last year. Like, that's you know? why I say that it relies on Rogers, though. I mean, you could say a thousand yards, but whoopee yeah. do a thousand yards isn't that big a deal anymore. You gotta have you gotta have a thousand yards, you gotta have double digit touchdowns, or at least very close to double digit. Yeah. You gotta have it all. He only had three touchdowns last year, a thousand forty two yards. But again, that's terrible quarterback play. And now he's got Aaron Rodgers who's gonna feed him. Dude, he's got I mean, who else is there? They got Mike he, Williams who sucks. He hopefully has Aaron Rodgers. Even if Aaron Rodgers is ready week one, what if the injury reoccurs or he aggravates something? You know, he's not a spring chicken. He's older now, man. It's not gonna be the same. I, I hope, but everything has to work out perfect. They got Tyrod Taylor as a backup who's older. <laughs> Oh, just, they got two old guys. I know two That's old. That's why dudes. I say, man, if it's not Rodgers, then Garrett Wilson is dog crap this year, and it's yeah, not his fault. But that's the way it goes. Well, it could be like that with anybody, though, Tim. Anybody? You Absolutely. Know? Not very many teams have two decent quarterbacks. No, definitely not. It's such a, and it's weird. There's like 300 plus million people in the states, and you can barely get 32 really good quarterbacks. It's so crazy, isn't it? Like it's such a sought out, rare position. That's why it's really crazy when I say they're dog crap. They're yeah. still like one in 25 million. Crazy. All right, two more guys to go here again. Smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. Let us know in the comments. Make this interactive. Drop it. What do you guys think? Were you guys drafting these guys? What do you think? Do you agree with Tim, Marvin Harrison Jr.? Do you believe in Kyler? Do you think Aaron Rodgers is going to finish the season? Let us know in the comments below. Drop a comment. All right, next guy here, A.J. Brown, who got paid handsomely as well. Most of these wide receivers on full bellies right now. Are they going to continue to eat? And again, you got the situation where Devontae Smith is a very good receiver, a speedster guy, but A.J. Brown is the alpha man, and he is the man. Mind you, this year they brought in Saquon Barkley, more check downs, more checking, you know, receptions going that way. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Again, A.J. Brown, you know, he's a safe. When I, when I think of A.J. Brown, I just think safe. I think, okay, I'm going to get a wide receiver. I'm just going to feel like warm and fuzzy inside. But I just don't get as giddy and excited. And a first round to early second round pick, very expensive for him. I don't know, man. He doesn't excite me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was that one time he said, I don't like fantasy football. And I got turned off the guy. I was like, I don't like this guy. Or maybe because he did nothing in Tennessee when he was there. And all of a sudden he became a somebody when he became on Philly. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I, he doesn't excite me, but th he's safe. It's funny you say that because I've never really been high on AJ either. But, you know, doing some homework today, going back and looking at his stats and everything, he's he's really good, man. Like, yeah, I was. don't know why we don't give him any credit. He does deserve some credit. To me, he's good for 150 targets, 100 receptions, 12 yeah. to 1,500 yards. You know, like the touchdowns are what Saquon really could have a play in here. He could take away some touchdowns, and, and you need those touchdowns if you're AJ. He'll still be pretty good. He's got a great floor. But if he loses those touchdowns, they go to Saquon. Now you got a problem. But you say 100 receptions. I mean, the only time he's I know it going, doesn't sound great, but no, no, but he's going into his sixth season. He's only had one 100 reception season, which was last year at 106. Before that was 88, 63, 70, and 52. So he's not a high, high, super high reception no. guy. 
You know, um, even when I, I say a hundred, a hundred, you got to give me a little leeway. I mean, I'm not saying bang on 100. It could be yeah. 96. It could be 104. I got to have a little leeway here. No, no, no. I'm, it's fine what you're saying. I'm just saying like, you know, he just, it seems like he had a pinnacle year out of all his career based on receptions last year. Just not his, you know, and then touchdowns were down seven compared to the 11 the year before. So yeah, you're looking at around 1,200 yard floor, eight touchdowns, 90 reception floor. Like I said, I just feel safe with him. I don't feel like over the moon excited, but volume is there, rapport is there, similar quarterback situations there. He's everything you want in in a safe guy that's not going anywhere for the next couple of years for sure. Yeah. All right, last guy here is Tyreek, which I'm not a fan of, and that could be biased because I don't like his off-field stuff, Tim. I don't like the fact that he's got like 10 baby mamas, kids that he just abandons. I'm just not a fan of the character. And, and that, I know, I got to focus only. on the fantasy aspect, but I, I can't. There's that bias there. That bothers me. And there's also just like the guy's older now. I know you're like sticking up for him and stuff. Like, the last two years have been his best, man. Like, yeah. I, I think you and I both thought that his move to Miami might not be great. He's been phenomenal, even I know. with Waddle there. And maybe that's a part of it, right? Like, they got two really good receivers there. So Waddle, I'm not going to say Waddle takes pressure off Tyreek, but, man, those two guys, you have to worry about them. And then they got good running backs as well. Not amazing, but good running backs. So they've got a pretty good, solid offense that you can't, like, double-team, triple-team some guys. You've got to play every man. It's got to be man-to-man or you're going to get burned. Yeah, and I think he wants to extend his contract, and he said that he's willing to kind of take a pay cut. I'm not going to be greedy, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, I want to stay in Miami. He likes the lifestyle. He likes, uh, you know, all that stuff. And Waddle got paid a huge contract as well. So, I mean, he could theoretically be the one, Waddle, but because Tyreek is there, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, he's set for volume. He could be good this year. Again, typical, what you see is what you get. But when is it going to hit the point where, like, he's going to go down? Similar to Christian McCaffrey. When is the year? Is like, it, that's it. Like, could this be the year where we finally see a, a, a you know, a, a tail? Like, he's going into his ninth season, dude. Like, he's not, he's 30 years old. Like, is this the regression year? Coming off a 13 touchdown, 1800 yard season, you know, in yards, 13, like, he's going down this year, one way or another. I think that's the like, thing. The only way it happens is injury. He is too good a player to just have a really crap year. Yeah. The only way is injury. Yeah. And I want to make an honorable mention here. I've got to talk about him to wrap this up. Is CD Lamb? I want to mention this because people say, you know, we didn't talk about him. Prime for volume, prime for targets. I think Jake Ferguson takes a step up at tight end, but there's really nobody else there. They got rid of Gallup. He's the man. And again, similar to Tyreek, injury is the only thing that can set this guy back. And coming off that pinnacle year, I only see a slight drop here. He's, a, he's in a perfect situation, man. Perfect. Absolutely. That's why we really didn't even talk about him. Like right now, C.D. Lamb is a no-brainer as far as going to get the volume. Like there is nobody there that's going to touch him. All right, man. That wraps it up. We're talking wide receivers. Guys, drop in the comments below. want to make this interactive. Are you drafting him? Are you staying away? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, these guys are primed for a ton of volume. Any last words to the listeners on their workday, Tim? That's it, man. Have a great day, guys. Have a great day, guys. We'll keep the content rolling. We're going to bring Jimmy back. He's coming back this week, and uh, we're going to rock it. We're going to rock it hard. Grab 16 rounds. We're out. Have a good day, everybody. Peace.